Let us praise God, for our God is good. Welcome. This morning we are thinking about that most intriguing Old Testament character, Abraham. He is the father of untold numbers of faithful people down through the ages. So, just what is there about this man that makes him so special? Listen on. Let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God present in Jesus, God present in the activity of your people, you are the God of invitation. Your invitation given to Abraham called him to follow you, trusting in the promises that you offered. You gave him promises of a relationship that would build a community. You commended your servant Abraham for his willingness to offer you his beloved son and from his family you called the people to follow your ways. In Jesus the Christ, you have offered to us your own beloved son. Whoever welcomes him welcomes you and whoever welcomes the teaching he entrusted to us finds the way that leads to righteousness and life. When Jesus was killed, you brought him back from death to life and through his grace you have freed us from slavery to sin and bound us to Christ so that we might be sanctified and follow him in pathways of life. God of salvation, we are surprised to discover your desire to have us as your people. We are thankful for the people who inspire us with their story of faith. May we be inspired to live as those who choose your path of light that the darkness of our fears and doubts may be dispelled by Christ's presence. Forgive us when we wander off the path like thoughtless sheep. Find us and bring us home. May we be your hands and feet to bring your invitation to all we meet. For in your love, you invite each and every person to follow you. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of our Saviour, Jesus, we pray. Let us now uh, listen to the reading this morning, which is uh, from Genesis chapter 22, 1 to 14. An amazing piece of scripture. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and he said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. 
He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in its thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Let us now welcome Reverend Johnson to bring God's message to us. Thank you, Reverend Johnson. Good morning to you, church. We want to thank God again as midweek service. Today is the 1st of July. I want to thank uh, Margaret for the reading of the Word of God from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. And our theme is, how much do you trust God? How much do you trust God? Uh, a farmer was out driving his tractor one day when he rode on to a stretch of gopher mounds. The earth crumbled beneath one tire and the tractor rolled over on his side. Luckily, the farmer escaped the situation with only a few bruises. He went home and told his wife. She breathed a sigh of relief and said, Honey, the Lord sure was with you. And the farmer surveyed his bruises and answered, Well, if he was, he sure got a rough ride. Abraham and Sarah knew that God was with them. They were a fortunate couple who, after years of heartache, were living their last years in happiness. God has promised them a son, and in their old age, he was born. They watched Isaac as he grew, knowing that he was a special child. After years of turmoil and trouble, Abraham and Sarah could now enjoy their retirement days, basking in the plow glow of a promise which has been kept. One day, Though God called Abraham, here I am. Abraham replied, God told Abraham, take your son and your only son Isaac, whom you love and offer him there is a burnt offering on those mountains that I shall tell you. God knew how much Abraham loved his son. What God had commanded Abraham to do was unthinkable. It was unbelievable. No sane parent would willingly harm his his or her own child. It was outrageous. Maybe Abraham should have his hearing checked. Maybe he didn't even hear everything God told him. Is it true that God has said this? How would I tell my wife that this is what I'm going to do? I think Abraham didn't even tell Sarah that he was going to sacrifice his son. Isaac was the child of promise. Isaac was Abraham's link to the future. What about that promise that you would be a father of a great nation? The whole request seemed so inconceivable, so outrageous, so unfair. How would he tell Sarah that he would offer their only son as a sacrifice? Notice that Abraham was willing to act in faith even when he did not understand. The bottom line was that Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham asked no questions. He didn't try to reason or argue with God. He didn't try to strike a deal. He did not even ask for an explanation or reason. Abraham said nothing. In such a situation, you would think that at least the thought would enter Abraham's mind to run in the opposite direction. Abraham had taken matters into his own hands before. Why not to do so now when his son's life was at stake? Why not run away from God now that his link to the future generations was in question? That is what you and I would have done, wouldn't we? Who do that? God is not, a real, is not as real to you or me as he was to Abraham. For Abraham, deliberate disobedience was unthinkable, regardless of how absurd the request may have seemed. You would not do anything to disobey God. Abraham would not do that. Without question or reservation, he set out for the mountains with his son Isaac and the two servants. 
They would travel three days until they arrived at the special mountain that God would guide them. Abraham took his faith seriously. It was not something he took lightly. Many years ago, some missionaries were going into a remote corner of a third world country to work with a primitive tribe. The missionaries were uncertain about how they would be received. So they decided to give their tribe a gift sign of a goodwill. As they flew over the area, a bright shiny new plow was parachuted down to the tribe. So the plow would help the natives as they farmed. At least that was the missionaries' intent. They were unprepared for what they found a new days later when they arrived at the encampment. The natives had never seen a plow before. They had a clue as to what this strange looking instrument which had dropped out of the sky was used for. Not knowing what to do with it, they had put the plow on a pedestal and were worshipping it. So the plow was designed to help them farm. It was designed for use in the fields, not to be revered. It was designed to strike deep in the soil. It was designed to help the people, to nourish the people, to make them healthier, to make their quality of life better. But the members of the, that primitive tribe didn't know that. So the plow became an ornament rather than a tool. Start worshipping the plow. Sometimes we do that with our faith. We make our faith an ornament instead of a tool to help us live our everyday life. Abraham might not have understood what God was commanding him to do. But being a man of great faith, Abraham was prepared to do whatever God commanded. Fortunately, it was never God's intent for Abraham to sacrifice his son. We need to know that every once in a while we hear about a tortured soul who ends not only his or her own life, but also the life of innocent fam family members. It would be a tragic misunderstanding if anyone who is listening to this message means that God would ever tell anybody to take the life of a child. You don't worship the God I worship if you could ever read this, that into this story. God never intended that Abraham should harm this child in a way. I suspect that deep in his heart, Abraham knew that. Perhaps that is why he told his servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I go over there. We will come back to you. So that me and the boy, we go to worship. For Abraham, he didn't tell the, his servants that he was going to sacrifice. He was intending for a worship. He said, me and the boy will go for a worship. In silence, father and son walked the final steps to the mountain. As they approached their destination, Isaac asked his father, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb of the burnt offering? Abraham replied, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. There was no other conversation as they slowly made their way up to the mountain. A troubled father, a trusting son, making their way into the deep unknown. That's what faith is all about, isn't that? We can place our trust in God. We can place our trust in God. When they came to the place that God had shown them, Abraham built an altar and there and he laid the wood in order. Then he bound Isaac and placed him on the altar. Abraham, with tears in his eyes, stood over his son with a hot core in one hand ready to start a fire and a knife in the other. At that moment, when Abraham was ready to kill his son, an angel of the Lord came out to him. Abraham, Abraham. For the third time, Abraham answered, Here I am. The angel told him, Do not lay your hand on that boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. What a relief. God has tested Abraham. Abraham passed the test with flying colors. At that moment of great relief, Abraham looked up and saw a ram. Caught in the bush, the ram was sacrificed instead of Isaac. Father and son worshipped God on the mountain because he had said, You guys stay here. Me and my son, we are going for worship. At the end, it was worshiping God instead of what he was intending to do. Abraham named the place the Lord would provide because he now knew the truth. 
God did provide and to continue to provide. Abraham placed his trust in God in a way he had never had before. Abraham knew he could depend on God no matter what happened. He was depending on God. His faith was in God. Because he knew that God is the one in charge of all his doings. For Abraham and Isaac are sealed both as heirs of the same promise. From this day forward, Abraham's faith leads him to the altar with Isaac. Abraham's faith allows him to lie upon it. God's heart saves both. At the end of the story, we read that Abraham named the place on this mountain the Lord is seen. God has seen the heart of Isaac. But Abraham and Isaac too have seen the heart of God. They have seen who God is. This kind of understanding of God is hard for us sometimes to fathom. It's a kind of understanding that goes beyond memorizing rules or following guidelines. It goes beyond our culture, our upbringing, ideas about what we should or what we should not do. It requires a kind of intuitive, faith-filled, relational connection with God in which we understand our hearts, the kind of love and kindness, mercy and peace that God's heart executes. That God is a sacrificial heart. And God chooses servants through the scriptures to be covenant bearers. Those who bear that same kind of loving, committed heart, a shepherd's sacrificial heart. He's looking for a sacrificial heart. A heart that says, whatever God says, I will do. Jesus tells us that God looks for a shepherd's heart in those chosen to do God's will in the world. God looks for those who lay down their lives for their sheep. In the end, God's own son is sent to save as the ultimate sacrificial shepherd, providing, proving that God's sacrificial heart is what is required to save and to save. God saves those with sacrificial hearts for the front lines of God's mission in the world. Today, in the midst of the worst pandemic in the world during COVID time, yes, since in 1918, we see signs everywhere of those with sacrificial hearts. We see people going further to help other people. Whether they are aware or not, these are people after God's own heart who are willing to put their lives on the line in order to save others. But they are not only people in healthcare, but they are people who pray for others, sacrificing their time and energy. People who give up their limited resources to help others eat. People who risk their reputation to stand up for others who have been persecuted. People who challenge their own assumptions in order to follow God's heart into a dangerous and unpredictable world. That's the kind of faith you and I need. With such a faith, we can live our life in confidence. The question for the day is, how much do you trust God? Abraham learned that behind the clouds of uncertainty, God waits. He placed his total trust in God and his trust was not misplaced. He trusted God. My guess is that Abraham was a different person when he descended from the mountain. From that moment on, Abraham realized that God would take care of his son Isaac. From that moment on, he realized that God would provide whatever was necessary for the fulfillment of his promise. This week, I challenge you to learn from the story of Abraham and Isaac, to listen for God's voice, to rise to the challenge of God's call, whatever that may be in your life, to learn God's heart, to emulate that heart to yourself, as you immerse yourself in the lives of others, as you help others, ask God to help you so that you go for the second mile helping other people. Only when we take on the heart of God, the sacrificial heart of Jesus, ask ourselves what that means for our own life. Can we truly walk the road of discipleship year after year? May God bless you in your travels. May you stay safe even as you venture forth as a disciple after God's own heart, moving out to help others, taking faith as what Jesus is saying. Be like an Abraham in your faith. When you hear God called you, when you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart. Just believe. Have faith in God for a miracle to happen. May the Lord bless you this morning. May the Lord encourage you in your Christian journey. God bless you.
In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for Abraham's example of trust and faith, faithful obedience, and ask whatever test and trial I, we may have to face you. That like him, we will be quick to obey your leading. We will be quick to obey your knowing. That your eternal purposes are wider than our limitations. Father, we just want to thank you for this kind of faith that you have in, installed in us. Thank you for using this beautiful picture of Abraham and Isaac as such an astonishing for, for, foreshadowing of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you that he paid the price of sin, our sin. And thank you that Jesus gave us life, a free will offering. He was given by the Father and was ready to offer his life to us for those who love him. Father, I just want to thank you this morning. May we have that faith you have given to Abraham. The faith that says yes to anything God says. The faith that doesn't question God who he is. But the faith that says, yes, with God, everything is possible. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen.